that clearly, clearly excels at this map, Gaskin. I think that Ascent comes down to a lot of strategy and teams who have put in the practice and they put in the preparation are going to excel on a map like this and TSM are exactly that team. So we need to see Whoa. some early entry frags. We need to see something big. Drone is going to get short-sighted here. Sam gets the opener at least onto Cutler, but Drone does go down, so Zachary's done at least his job. Hayes will at least pick up one, can't get the second, but there's kills going flying everywhere right now. We're leaving just one member left of TSM. It's going to be Wardell against three, so this could be the perfect start for FaZe. They just seem to be pistol gods at the moment. Corey gets the final, and there we go. That is the start they needed, GB. That is the one round that they were able to achieve against Cloud9. Now they just need to better that here against TSM. And here is an interesting little bit for everyone watching right now. And I'm sure you're thinking to yourself, what's going on? Why is there no Sage? And I think the reason why is because Sage's kit, while the res and the heal are important, Sage's kit maybe isn't the best thing on a map like Ascent. That, that could very well be the possibility here. Both teams are not running Sage, Gaskin. What, what do you think is the reasoning behind this? Because Sage has been such a, a constant for so many of these teams. I think it is... A map like Ascent is so difficult to rotate to the other spike site, and it takes so long sometimes to get around that Sage can often just get caught on one site on her own, and she can't be in both places at the same time. You don't get the heals as successfully as you do on some other smaller maps, or something like Bind, or something like Haven, when you can quickly get site to site. As Sam gets two, he does get taken down by Drone, but Marv is there to trade. That's going to be three. Oh. So Brosa gets one onto Marv, and okay, suddenly this gets a little bit interesting. Does have a gun to work with now, so it's always entirely possible. It's a one versus three, but just as I get excited, Death will close that one out and FaZe get their second. But to go back to your point, GB, I just think it's how the map works. It's just entirely different to the other three maps. I think that's one thing I yeah. love about Valorant is every map has its own individuality. Every map warrants a different agent selection. And the fact we're seeing different compositions per map is awesome. Yeah, indeed it is. It, it's also like kind of uncomfortable not to see Sub Rosa playing uh, the, the Brimstone. I've casted so much of TSM, whether it was like Twitch Rivals or a few of the other competitions that they've done. And to not see Sub Rosa play, it, it's just, it's, it's weird. But uh, what isn't weird is seeing what you see at the top right of your screen. Wardell getting a first blood with an op. No surprise there. Sub Rosa, though, looking the challenge. Still has his paranoia available to him. He's going to win out that fight there against Zachary. The player left on site. Is, uh, you're going to have two players uh, scattered about on B and A. Also, uh, one in the mid. That will be Corey, I believe, the Phoenix player for them. As they look to rotate around, Sabrosa gets another kill this time around. And B site is going to be free. The mid rotation coming through. But Corey was not able to locate a kill quickly enough, despite him being caught open. Spike is down, but shouldn't be for too long. And then through the smoke. It's Wardell with another op connection. All right, so we've seen the first picked up by TSM. Now they've got guns to work with, and we're going to get to witness their execution skills yeah. on Ascent. They have both the Omen and the Brimstone available, which means that they can try and dominate middle. But of course, with an Omen and Brimstone on the other side of the map, we're going to see smokes galore, and maybe just both teams trying to battle to try and take that mid control. Or we're going to see TSM say, look, we don't care about mid control. Maybe we'll smoke it. We think we're going to try and take it. And then we're just going to push aggressively onto one side. Or Drone is just going to say, actually, I'm the better Phoenix. I don't care where you are, Corey. I'm just going to flash in. I'm going to get aggressive. And I'm going to win that trade. Interestingly to note here, uh, in the matchup against Cloud9, this composition was not present. Uh, so I don't know if this is something that they are, are new to or if this is something that they're... Uh, both teams seemingly have the same idea, uh, but also C9 and FaZe both ran identical, near identical comp uh, compositions, but both teams did have a Sage. This is on Ascent. Perhaps, you know, as we go along with this, we're learning more and more, and you were right, Dan, about the identity of the maps, and they're almost a, a character in of themselves. Zachary with the off does locate one low. Of Rosa, he gets caught off guard, and, and it's going to be Def who punishes him there. But Cutler was able to secure two for his team, and now it's just going to be left up to Def and Marv to try and figure this one out here. 
they have the spike right in front of them and an op looking at it it's definitely winnable this is going to be difficult for tsm not much time to work with as well drone does have run it back available and he is going to utilize this can he pick up the spike is the real question does try and get the kill but doesn't get the spike they needed that death manages to pick up the one onto cutler as well and this should be the round comfortably for phase clan now they don't need to challenge this they know the spike can't go down so it is going to be a third for phase. So they're already doing three times as well as they did against Cloud9. Yeah. <laughs> Those are the stats that are important here. Okay. Three times as well as they did against C9. Uh, players are, are discovering things. They're throwing stuff out there. It, look, the, the C9 game that happened uh, with phase also did not matter. It came at the end. Phase had already made it past into the group play at that or made it past yeah. the bracket play at that point so there's also a lot to extract from there um but as of right now though this has been uh, quite the curious game that we're seeing thus far phase clan up three one if you're just joining us this is game number two tsm taking haven in dramatic fashion but now on the attack wardell utilizing the operator mid and the Sova on, on this with all the smokes is uh, so important to have because you'll just get that extra vision. Players, uh, you know, you, they'll, they'll have to back away. And that's really the only option that you have in mid, right? Gaskin is like, if you know you're going to get pushed, your only option is to go back to your spawn and then try and fight through that doorway if they look to challenge you through there and you just have no other choice but to make a rotation. Yeah, you, you almost on the defending side have to give up mid. If the other team is controlling it well, if they're smoking it off and, and utilizing Sova, as you say, because if you try and get aggressive, if you try and take mid yourself, there's so many different angles you can be caught off by. You really need to have a coordinated push, but you don't need to do that as a defending team. You don't have to take control of middle. Even though it's tempting, you can back off, but it can leave you very vulnerable on certain sites. Orbital Strike will come down. Zachary gets the open onto Sabrosa. Hayes will at least get the trade. Hunter's Fury now comes out. Can he tag anyone with it? Can he get anything? It doesn't look like he is going to be able to find it. And now with the scout, it's easy picking with the Marshal for Corey. Uh, but Drone is there just to ruin the day. Yeah, that is, uh, that is Drone's catchphrase. I like to ruin the day. Uh, and he succeeds in that one. Nine times out of ten, saw him on top of the scaffolding. Uh, will be stuffed away by Drone, who gets himself three kills in that round. And the is just a, a, a weird map, right? It's just a weird map. You have a, a mid area that you almost have to concede, pretty much. Uh, you're going to be dropping smokes everywhere. So you're cutting up the map significantly. And you're, you're really just trying to pry away any kind of utility that you can uh from any of the players right from any any of the agents that are going to be playing on their respective side you're just trying to eke away as much as you possibly can this is a save round now for phase as tsm are trying to reap the benefits of this one drone a familiar territory for him gets two kills a site completely exposed they're going to do their due diligence though and get more intel inside a site but i believe that they're going to be clear as day of course we know that they don't the plant will come, and it is going to be a tall task here for your final two players here from FaZe Clan. You got Psalm on one end trying to push around. The Omen creeping up in the background there might actually get killed by another creeping Omen. And this is basically going to be a tied-up game here. Yep, that's going to be 3-3. Three, three. And even though FaZe were able to successfully choose which site to stack three members, it didn't really work out too well. No one was able to get that pick, and the op was just too strong. Uh, but we are going to see the op buy for Def. He's going to be going... Well, actually, it's two op purchases. Zachary and Def are going to have one each, and they are going to both go for just the half armor. Um, so a little bit of a risk, but I guess they can hold angles now. They can make this very difficult for TSM, and we're going to... See what TSM have to offer for an execute now that there are guns on the other side. Drone has run it back available, and we've seen him. He likes to push onto this site, Alex. Yep, he sure does. Paranoia is going to stop that push and give Som all that presence. And just also look at the roles that are playing around each other, right? You have a smoke character with an, with an intel gathering character on each end, you know, so that... And those are going to be the ones, uh, you know, mix and match, obviously, but they'll be playing with the op, correct? So that means that they have just just a little bit more vision and, and just and just uh, some more support, you know, that, that you'll be able to just 
uh, rip away any of that utility from the enemy team. Corey does get the knowledge that there is going to be uh, one located. Zachary is going to end Sub Rosa, and he gets right on out of there. And I just love the way that they're playing this on defense. The double op play, splitting the map, repositioning the way that they have so far. Gaskin has been very well done. Has been well done. You're completely right at how important it is having these agents. They can gather information, especially Sova with the amount of walls that can be banged in the middle of the map as well. Which makes it so difficult to try and take that mid control. Does Cutler know that there is someone waiting? down at a long or not that's the real question but drone is going to run it back onto the opposite site onto b site and he is going to find absolutely no one they're going to be able to get comfortably onto that b site Corey gets a pick on mid at least and sam is going to be the first point of defense but he just can't take down the op of wardle which means that wardell here is going to have the op available he's going to be able to just watch these doors comfortably and as long as they get into a decent post plant this is definitely winnable here yeah indeed it is here comes the orbital strike now in play, push and the retake, starting to come on forward, but it is Hayes who gets a headshot, drone with one, drone right through the wood, gets a second kill on Zachary, now just leaving Marv on the site, attackers win, yes they do, TSM pick up the round, and they're gonna get all those ops, and it was a good round at the start for FaZe, they had the right idea, but in the end, uh, I think if you if if Psalm gets the kill on Wardell, maybe the complexion of that round changes significantly. Maybe not. You still had some heavy hitters left alive uh, to deal with the uh, to deal with the retake. But that is uh, going to be TSM getting the lead. And TSM just showing how excellently they can manipulate the map as well. Even though they lost a man early, they were able to shift phase plan across to the other side of the site, convince them they were going to be executing elsewhere, and they just kind of strolled comfortably onto the B site. It was so easy for them in the end. Okay, they had to run it back and force the one member off and scare them, but it shouldn't be that easy. But that's what makes a sense so difficult, is you have to really, as a defending team, try and go for that early commitment to a rotate because if you don't you can just get caught off guard and you can be overwhelmed by numbers uh, the door will come down on that site and sub rosa is just slowly but surely edging his way up four members on each side so at least there's been able to get one pick for phase and so you, you can do some real damage with the sheriffs they are a very scary weapon to be going up against so death it's gonna be the first point of contact here does get spotted though, and he's gonna get flashed as well. That's gonna be a rip for him, even an orbital strike just to rub salt in the wounds there. Yeah, if it wasn't gonna be the shot, it was certainly gonna be the microwave that was gonna fry him. Marv actually gets a ding there, but Hayes stays alive. Zachary all the way in the back of the site. Are they aware of this? As he tries to peek around corner. If he actually comes through the steps, he should be okay, but think they are aware and they they have uh, made the assumption it's like okay he he has to be making his way around probably ct side i don't think that they are well they they certainly are going to be aware wait a minute wait a minute no oh, certainly not i think they had to have seen him yep they did okay they saw the edge lord all the way in the back and wardell is going to get himself a not for that one. So all's well that ends well for TSM. They're going to go up 5-3. FaZe Clan need to figure it out here, Gaskin. And so far, they've had moments of greatness. But TSM, they just have a, a clearer plan on how they want to approach Ascent, it feels like. I think the Ascent can be a, an attacking heavy map if you know how to attack on it. It's very difficult to defend against a team who will just cut that map in half force you to try and commit to either site and then bait you and then commit to the other site and then their post plants have been excellent so far from tsm they've made things so difficult for phase to be able to retake a site hunter's fury is going to come out after the tag so this is usually a guaranteed kill but it's so difficult with hunter's fury now to get those kills when people are just so good at dodging it um, honestly i think it's one of the more difficult ultimates in the game to actually get a kill with but some people manage to do it better than others yeah, I believe in the phase Hunter Thieves game, we were seeing everyone just pull off a whole heap load of Hunter Fury kills. It was crazy. Absolute craziness. Anyway, though, as all that was going on, I'm going to actually force Psalm back. Zachary's going to be playing the angle for the commitment. So if 
anyone tries to get inside of sight, should be able to punish. 50 seconds on the clock. Plenty of time left for this team to work with. As some slow rotations start to come out there, you got Corey who's just playing the back site by spawn. And now they're going to be inside, or at least thinking about coming inside of the A site. Cyber Cage was activated there just for a moment, and Hayes marches on through, will take presence on the site. Marv up top, though. Wardell has his teammates back. Corey with a flash up from on high in the scaffolding. That actually should give them enough time to slow down, reposition. No one should be pushing around this on the scaffolding now, Gaskin, but we'll see how this all unfolds. One player is actually going to be located in the back by the cubby. I don't know if uh, Corey is very aware of that. Wardell, too. And he is right there with another shot to the chest. Say cheese, you're caught on the candid camera right through the floor. <laughs> He's just <laughs> spinning around like a madman. Get sagged up a little bit there, by the way. And that's actually pretty funny. Exit frags too. This is punishing now for FaZe and a round win for TSM. Just ensure they put himself in a position where he wasn't going to be able to get comfortably wall banged as well. Always a scary factor when you get tagged by the drone. Uh, when you are on those... Uh, when you are in, in heaven, because you can just be sprayed down. Um, but even if you're in heaven or hell... If you can get to the right place at the right time, you are not going to be tagged out. And it worked out. 6-3 now for TSM. And again, it was just their execution that was strong. Their post plant was even stronger. And FaZe really need to find a way to stop TSM from being able to just comfortably waddle onto a site. Because at the moment, there hasn't been enough resistance. FaZe have almost backed off and allowed TSM onto sites and say, well, we'll let them get so far and then hope we can get a pick and take a more defensive angle. Now we're seeing a little bit of aggression from FaZe Clan. Obviously, they are on a weak buy, so you can understand why that aggression is there. They're trying to take that middle control, which they have done successfully. And Hayes goes down, and it's almost like they were fed up of waiting now. And they want to just make sure they win this round. They have won five rounds in a row, TSM. It was starting to feel like Haven Part 2 Electric Boogaloo. Thankfully, uh, we're starting to see this FaZe team really jockey for that presence in mid exactly wardell though uh, it's not having any of those shenanigans even then the man advantage will be for phase exactly they only lost their brim all that intel starting to come in so bros are just waiting for the cross with that flame wall seeing if anyone was going to try and get a little aggressive inside of the mid but instead they do not they back away Just look at this. I mean, there's mid for free, right? There's because, but they're surrounded completely. <laughs> they're surrounded completely, and Corey is inevitably going to run into these guys and actually does find one out. Hits the tap, gets the second kill. Where's going to be the last player left alive? It's Sub Rosa and Psalm waited for him coming out of his area that he's been holding. And this is a finally phase getting a, a point on the board after losing five straight. Yeah, and it was just sheer aggression from them as well. I, I don't know whether it's the, they've realized that holding angles hasn't been working and that they haven't been able to get any sort of like wide peaks and the angles have been bad for them. Or whether they just thought, look, we've lost five. Let's try something new. They pushed through the smokes in the middle, tried to utilize Sova's dart as well to get the recon. And they were successful. They got that one pick just down on short. And they were able to use that man advantage for the rest of the round. Death's able to get the opening onto Cutler as well. He wins the Cypher on Cypher battle. And now with that early pick, they should have the advantage going into this round. Again, it's just so huge they get this first kill. So if they can show a little bit of aggression in certain areas, they're always going to have a chance. Got a few frags coming in on both sides of the field here. Focus is going to be on the A site. There goes the drone strike, or excuse me, the orbital strike. Doesn't really catch anyone, but it is going to just slow some things down. Marv, who has actually been a big difference maker for this team. We put a lot of focus on, on Corey because of the, the stature of player that he is. But in this series so far, I mean, Marv and, and Def have just been so instrumental uh, in so many rounds for this team. This player too, Corey, uh, or sorry, Zachary, I've actually been very impressed with him in this particular game. Didn't know what to expect from him on the Omen. And so far, it has certainly been good, and he got value out of it, even when the threat of the Orbital Strike was coming down. 
Zachary gets the kill, ending the run. He had the comfort to be able to do that. And that is going to bring FaZe within one of TSM. Bringing this thing back slowly but surely, Gaskin. Just showing that confidence. Uh, there's so many players that you'll see that as soon as Orbital Strike is popped, they will just run. But his awareness was good. He looked at the minimap. He made sure he knew where he was. He was on the edge. He was close enough to have a shot. And then he was able to pop. Uh, really good stuff. It, it's a very small play, like a very minute play. But actually, in the grand scheme of things, things like that are going to be able to push your team to the next level. Like being able to have that confidence and not fearing about taking a little bit of damage is always going to be a good thing. 6-5. I think FaZe will be pretty happy with this, with, with five rounds. Okay, if they get six, it'll be even better. But um, TSM not allowing FaZe to control middle this time. But there is a Phoenix waiting in the smoke just there at mid. So they do need to be a little bit careful. Death is going to go to the common spot. Actually identifies two players that were going to be there. Marv met him with the snipe. Paranoia is going to be out. Marv gets two kills for his efforts inside of there. And then Sub Rosa challenges him right through the dark cover. We'll yank away that op here. We'll look to put it to good use. They are going to be a 3v4 in favor of TSM. Here comes a Hunter's Fury from Psalm. And that was just an ambitious Hunter's, Hunter's Fury that got a big kill. And now, 2v2. Zachary on top of heaven. Wardell's going to get the intel. Finds one, maybe a second one too. Goodbye. And that is going to be the way you close that bad boy out. 7-5 as we go into the next half. That was just really unfortunate timing. Every Sova main there is just kind of wincing in their seat because it's all happened to them. As soon as you get that drone out, someone pops behind you. He would have got the shout as well from the teammate. It's rough to see, but I, I do think that five rounds is, is okay for FaZe here. But any team that is somewhat newly formed or isn't a team, is a puggy team, however you want to call it, they are always going to be better at defending than attacking, just because it's easier to defend in most maps because of that. They need some strategy here if they're going to be able to break through TSM now defending. It's going to be tough for them. Maybe they're just going to start five-man rushing sites and just hope that they can outshoot TSM and hope that they can just force themselves onto the site with the man advantage. But we'll see what happens as Hayes gets the opener. Big start there for Hayes as Sub Rosa also doesn't want to be left out of there. And then Marv, man, he's just been all over the kill feed time and time okay. again. A critical playmaker for this team. Wardell, though, not to be outshined. He's going to snag that headshot there with the classic and will reap the benefits of the ghost. They are going to be on site at Spike Down. Def is there, and Def actually was inside of the uh, inside of uh, a site comfortably and was waiting for his teammate to get inside of there. But instead, right by that doorway, leaving Def all by himself, his teammate met his demise. Now just having to rotate all the way around. And I think that for the sake of TSM, they're simply just gonna handhold and play around together just so that this way they could uh, just trade out when they need to and get this win. Well, the benefit of going this way is it does mean he's able to pick up his utility, replace the traps, but his location will be revealed, so you can instantly <laughs> see a TSM bombing it back through spawn. But at least Def is going to be able to get this bomb down and give himself a chance here. He's able to put one trap wire down so he can at least not worry about one of those angles oh, because man. they are holding hands, because the information has been gathered. He has to go huge here, but he can't do anything. Cutler looks like he was just running and shooting there, did not give a damn about any sort of movement. 7-5, uh, make that 8-5 for TSM. They pick up the first pistol of this half. Well, the only pistol of this half. And Wardell, I mean, 15-5, and five, Golden Boy. He yep. just seems to be the man of the moment in this particular game. It was all Drone last game, but Wardell has definitely been stepping up yet again. Yeah, and, and Drone has been slapping. Let's, let's, oh, of you course. Know, let's just uh, get that clear. Uh, I did want to talk about the end of that round, though. I, I <laughs> The two worst players that... Uh, Def could have dealt with there was the Sova and the Cypher because Cutler had a camera in, inside of sight and then Wardell shot the arrow out too. There was just too much intel for him to have to deal with there. Uh, and that is just going to bring them one step closer to victory. Now we're going to get this slow B play. Some poke around in the mid. They are going to be blocked off from the dark cover. 
And they're also going to be dealing with the force of some Bulldog Spectres. I like this little angle here from Drone. Unfortunately for him, he is going to get identified. They, they know that he's going to be camping out in that corner. And then they push the dark cover. But they have not been able to get into the site quite yet because there's so much delay coming through. Still so many members on the other side of the map here, but it doesn't matter oh because the hold is just too strong, too easy in the end. And Zachary is going to be the last remaining player. Pushes through smoke, somehow still alive, but Hayes will finish things off. And uh, that was a massacre. That really yeah, was. Is that the, the sheep to the slaughter or the, the lambs to the <laughs> I mean, even if you have a group of sheep, Golden Boy, they're still sheep, not sheeps. Just, to, just gonna really? point that one out there for you as well. Is it really like that? Yeah. I, so there's no. I, I mean, look, I, I, I say this every time. The New York public education system failed me dramatically. <laughs> okay, I lack all of the critical intelligence. Yes. Uh, also, the word intelligence. Uh, so I'm, I'm just saying. Sheep to the slaughter. Good they, to know. Yeah, there you go. I mean, still a questionable saying, as we mentioned earlier. The but more way, you know with Gaskin. Yeah, maybe we can have some lessons or something. But uh, yeah. either way, it doesn't matter what <laughs> is getting slaughtered. Right now, it seems to be FaZe Clan because TSM just seemed to have such a strong hold. Okay, I know it was it was a weak buy, and obviously it's always going to be difficult pushing into the SMGs. But now this is the round four phase. They need to step up here in this third round of the half make use of these rifles if one of them goes down if they lose this rifle to tsm and they go down 10-5 this could be the game this could be the series it could be phase clan dropping into the lower bracket sabrosa is waiting with that paranoia any any opportunity he'll get he keeps stalling them here in the cubby but he's been holding on to this paranoia that the moment they decide to push he is going to do his best to punish with that little bit of utility there. You just look at that, he drops back and there you go. He's actually gonna catch one, maybe a second one, but gets paranoid of his own there. And Zachary waited that one out and gets to trade. Huge benefit. Now, but there's still gonna be two players located on site. Scratch that, just one. It's Wardell though. Is he gonna be enough? He might actually be enough. Looking for a third one. Are you gonna poke? He sees your gun. He knows you're right there. Goodbye all. No, it's Wardell. That man's picked by Marv as a matter of fact. Oh, I made the assumption, silly me. And FaZe get a win. But man, that was looking like, I mean, we caught away at that, at that exact moment. So, you know, I was just like all kinds of just kerfl kerfluffled, you know? I mean, as soon as you see those two opening kills from Wardell with the op, you're like, yeah, okay, he's easily gonna make this three. And the switch across, you heard the op shot, you think this is, but then Marv's gonna watch this back and he's gonna say, how dare you? How dare you doubt me and my op skills? Marv has stepped up here for phase. He brought them back into this game. They needed that round, huge kill, but elsewhere there was stuff being done. Hit him with the spray, and baby. As I say that, I mean, Marv, he goes for the little spray twitch that so many players seem to have. Just a flex on people. Orbital Strike is available for Hazed if he wants to use it this round. I personally would rather use it for a post plant or a site clearance, but at least it is there and it is available. It's available on both sides, actually. So Brimstone doing yep. well on both teams right now. And this pick kind of stretches thin the defensive hold for TSM. But with Drone playing inside of Market, easy rotate for him in case things get hairy at B. But as we can tell, the focus will certainly be on A. And I think we're getting a bit of a cheeky lineup there with an arrow. And there it is. It does go down. Two players are going to be located in Hell down low. I'm not sure and the paranoia. Spotted. Yeah, that was a, that was a little uh, sneaky paranoia. So they obviously don't know that the paranoia was tagged, but they had an inclination. Wardell, though, with two on a classic, still getting tons of value for this team. Oh, no. A response in turn. It's actually going to prompt a lot of movement around the corner, and Marv can't get away in time. It's only going to be one player left, though. It's Hayes. He's got a sheriff. He is going to be tagged. Two players remaining on the opposite side for FaZe Clan. Is they're going to try and eke away at this, uh, or at least Hayes is going to try and eke away at this time, but there's nothing he could really do. The spike was in the hands of the opposing player, and the plant has gone through. That was Def that successfully managed to end that round, bringing them within two of TSM. 
What a game. Faye's certainly getting better at holding crossfire as well. I mean, there was a couple of rounds in the previous map on Haven where the crossfire was a little bit weird and they weren't trading that successfully. And I don't know whether it was just lacking confidence, but Faye's looking better now. They're more than happy to step out into some open areas and trust their teammates because trusting your teammates can be everything in a game like this. If you don't have that trust, if you're not happy to step out, if you're not willing to die for a teammate, it is always going to be a bad situation and leave yourself in a little bit of a sticky time but tsm they still have the lead so Bruiser gets the open order to death drone follows up onto sam as well so now they have a two-man advantage as they start to edge their way towards this b side phase clan can they do anything now they are two down they want to go to b but because tsm have already shifted their way to the b side it's going to be very difficult for them to break onto it but if they go the other way look at all those cypher traps Yep, that's right. You got a lot of cypher traps, cyber uh, cages to deal with. In the mid, you have Wardell watching that with an op. You will need to place that dark cover. cover which Zachary out. does have. It's actually going to play that one further outward. And then the arrow came through. So oh, that man. actually, uh, the, the arrow actually forward the recon bolt. Just, you know, let them know that there was someone watching inside of mid. And I think now they're thinking about whether or not, like, what is going to be this play here for FaZe Clan. With the run it back, though, I think that gives them all the intel that they could possibly need. Hayes, through the smoke, as it clears, gets a kill versus Marv. Gotcha. And Corey had to just back away. And they're a very slow round here, but... I think at this point now, this team knows that there's just not much more that they could possibly do. Only one player left alive. Five on the opposite end for TSM. You just want to save that up. And this is the round. You should be able to comfortably save it. So Broza started to have a little bit of a sniff towards him, but it's not going to work out. 10-7 now. And... We're starting to worry a little bit for FaZe. I think TSM are getting comfortable with their rotations. They're starting to see patterns develop for FaZe's attack. When one execute fails, or if there's some opening picks, they seem to try and put their eggs all in one basket over at the A site. At the B site, sorry. They are avoiding the A site mainly because of Cypher. And I do feel like TSM have caught wind of that. And as soon as a team has gathered that information, they can read you and they can make those predictions, then that is always scary. Because then you start to second guess yourself. Do they know which site we're pushing? Are we being too predictable? Should we try and be more unpredictable in this situation? And then things just get hazy and people start to play a lot worse when that's going down. And I believe yeah. now as a uh, drone, he's called it out he does get into a nice little spot there and right in the cubby and two headshots on a Corey and zachary punish fury is out the mad dash is going to happen inside of the a site there the first flash doesn't connect the second flash don't think so either but it ain't going to be no thing because all the way down to the site the spikes down last player left alive you got some you got to deal with every single member of tsm still alive Shades of what Corey had to deal with, except last round, he was just trying to hold on to the op. This time around, perhaps TSM are going to go hunting. This could be the opportunity for Psalm to punish, potentially. Three players right on the opposite side, and Drone. Four kills for Drone in that round. It all, it all started in that cubby, waiting patiently for the mistake from FaZe Clan. They are now just two rounds away from locking this thing up. And patience was the key, and not only did he show patience at the start of the round, he also showed patience at the end of the round there. He got the 3k, and he knew that Sam was down long, but he didn't push for it straight away. He didn't go greedy and say, oh, I want the 4k, I want the kills. He waited for the omen bubble to disappear, he waited for his team to join him, and then they all just successfully pushed. Like, that is a sign of a very patient and calm player, even though they are heading towards a victory here, even though they're dominating, even though he had a 3k, he still waited. And now Drone That's ridiculous. is just doing more of the same. Marv, unfortunately, just walked straight into those phantom bullets. And this is not going to be an easy round for FaZe Clan. I mean, it was already going to be difficult enough with their buy. So Broza takes down Death, and now there's just three members, and they've got Sheriffs to work with. Someone just needs to go huge here. Otherwise, we're looking at a 12-7. Oh, that's right. 
I think Faze are just asking themselves, what do we need to do <laughs> genuinely? Uh, because there is been no openings for Faze Clan to be able to properly execute on. TSM have done everything right. We talked about this map being favorable to the attackers. But then you see moments like the start of it where, you know, you, you just have uh, some, you know, just some casual peeks from drone, right? Just to start the round off. Oh, yeah, just, you know, happen to land himself a kill there against Marv. And then, then you just lose yourself three smokes. Gone. Just like that. Start of the round. Right. What what a what a uh, an agent to lose so early on that now you don't have that utility and you're just waiting for the omen to give you the coverage and it's just not really working out. Look at Wardell again. Wardell again. Someone's got to stop challenging this guy at some point. And TSM now are at match point here, Dan. They are at match point and you're right. I mean, I did say that I, I think it's a somewhat attacking heavy map at times and. I think the, the, the sheer difference between these two teams is TSM just have a little bit more in the playbook. And I think that's okay. I don't think FaZe Clan should be disheartened. I think they should be pretty impressed with how they've been able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with TSM in this series. But I just think that there isn't enough for them yet. FaZe Clan aren't the same structured team that TSM are. We know that. Mm -hmm. They though know that. So they just need to take what they can from this, as they will still be in the tournament if they get knocked down. Of course, it's still not over yet. Even at 12-7, there's still a possibility they can come back into this. But if they were to get knocked into that lower bracket, they just have to try and learn and move on. But Drone gets the opening with the run it back. That's going to make things even more difficult for FaZe Clan here. All four of them at this point, when you've lost a man, you need to group up and you need to commit to a bomb site. You can't just be looking for picks because mm -hmm. TSM are not going to show. Even at the start of that, Drone is, is known for using his run it back to get whatever information he can out of the enemy team. But then when he's also running back, run, doing the running back, and then also gets a kill, that stings just as much. And with no Sage, you can't change the balance of the round to get the res off. So you're just left playing a man down in this situation. And the confidence now, the confidence from Drone to push through the smoke, knowing that someone was going to be on the other side. And this is falling apart quickly here for FaZe Clan. The wagon looked good. It looked like they were gonna just ride to the sunset, but the wheels fell off and TSM, they are gonna claim victory here over FaZe Clan 13-7.